Welcome back to Learn C++ Game Development Course Lesson 2. In this video, I'm going to show you the solutions for the examples or exercises I put on the course. Keep in mind that if you already completed the exercises, that your solutions may differ from mine. And I will also use a state-based system to always separate logic from events, because that's something you should always do. So that get on to the exercises. Exercise 1 is pretty simple. We just print out to the console if button space has been released. That is very similar to what we've done before. So let's just create a new variable up here. Let's call it button space and set it to false. Now in the events part, we simply check if the event type is equal to SDL key up because we're checking if a key has been released and if the key we're looking for so key dot key dot key sim dot sim I mean event dot key dot key sim dot sim is equal to SDL K space so this is the event we're searching for and if this happens we set button space to true so we have button space set to true if the space key has been released. Now in the logic part, we simply add an if statement. So if button space is equal to true, we output to the console. So let's output button space has been released and a new line. And at the end we set button space to false, so we don't print out to the console the next frame. So if we run this now, hold down space and release it, it says button space has been released. And that's exercise 1. Exercise 2, check if the right mouse button was clicked, if it was, decrease the click count by 1 and print out to the console. This exercise expands the click, the counting of clicks ex uh, code by decreasing them if we do a right click. So we're going to need a variable, let's call it bool, type bool, name button mouse right, and set it to false. Now the code for checking for the event is almost similar to the left mouse button, so I'm just going to copy this, paste it right on the red. So if we have to change the event dot button dot button because we're checking for SDL button right, which is the right mouse button, and we also set button mouse right to true. So down the code we have the button mouse left logic. So now let's write if button mouse right is equal to true logic. So if this happens, we have to decrease clicks by 1 and then output the console. We can do it very similar as we did in the increase. We just replace the pluses with minus. So we can do clicks minus minus. Then we output the console. So, number of mouse clicks and let's add the variable clicks in it and a new line and at the end we set button mouse right to false now if we run this console so if you do a few left clicks you can see the number goes up and if we do a right click the number goes down it also goes into the minus but as it, you can see we don't output coordinates because we don't do that in the logic for right mouse button so that's exercise 2 exercise 3 is check if button T has been pressed if so, change the window caption or title. 
So this exercise is fairly simple. You just have to find the function that changes the win window title. And we use that function in the lesson one. It's the function SDL VM set caption. So we're going to use that. First we're going to create a variable for the T button. So type is bool, button T, and set to false. We're going to check if it has been pressed down, so key down event. I'm going to copy the escape key down event, just paste it here, change the SDLK escape to SDLK T for the T button, and the variable we change now is button T. As you can see, the events are all very similar, so we can just copy and paste and change them. So in the logic part, we check if button t is equal to true, we call the function to change the window caption. So that's vl, I mean sdl, under dash vm, under dash set caption, and then we set the title. Let's say t has been pressed. And a null for the icon, because we don't use one. And we set button T to false. So we don't change the caption again. Even though we could do that because it's same. But let's just set button T to false so we don't call that function again. So if we run this. So you can see the caption is less than 1. And if we press T, it changes to T has been pressed. Now uh, to exercise number four, when button R is pressed, the color of the screen should be set to red. Again, a simple event logic. We only have to use another function from lesson one, which is GL clear color that changes the color of the screen. So once again, we create a variable, bool, let's call it button R, set it to false. And the events, I'm just going to copy the code for button T, paste it, change the SDLK T to SDLK R, and the variable we're changing now is button R. Now down the logic part, we simply have to check if button R is equal to true, we said GL clear color, we call the function, and put in 1 for red, 0 for green, 0 for blue, and 1 for alpha. We always put 1 for alpha, well, at least for now. So 1 for red will be completely red because we have 0 for green and blue. We don't have to set button R to false down here because we can let this execute every frame because it won't do much to the program. We can change the clear color every frame. Now if we run this, hit R, the color of the screen goes red. That's exercise 4. Exercise 5 is to update the previous exercise so that when button R is released, the screen returns to white. Now there are two ways to doing this. One is that we create adi an additional variable, like we did with button A for up and down, so for press down and release. But because we can change the clear color every frame, we can simply do an else statement. And we also have to add an additional event. And that event is, to check if R has been released. So I'm just going to copy the R pressed event and change it to key up event, so a re release event. And in this happens, we set button R to false. So if R has been pressed, it's set to true, and if it's released, it's set to false. Now in the logic part, we set the color to red 
if it is pressed down. So if it's not pressed down, we should set the color to white. And we can do that with an else statement. We just write else and then the body of the code that should happen. So we set clear, gl clear color to white, which is 1, 1, 1, 1. So now if button R is true, so if it's pressed, the clear color is going to be red. And if it's not, the clear color is going to be white. Now let's run this. And if I hold on R, it's red, and when I release it, it goes back to white. That's exercise 5. Exercise 6, update the program so that when you click the leftmost button and the X coordinate of it is less than 200, the program closes. This is actually a very simple pr program. We just have to add a little logic. So we go down to the code for the leftmost button is this and we first increase the clicks by one we reserve two variables and get the position of the mouse with the SDL get mouse state function now what we want to do is to check if the X variable is less than 200 and if that is true we simply close the program by setting play to false so what we do is just add a simple if statement if x is less than 200 we set play to false and that closes our main game loop and closes the program very very, very simple so if we run this <coughs> I'm just going to put the console up here so you can see the coordinates so the first coordinate is the x coordinate so if I press it in the right part the x coordinate is 540 I go to the left, 390, 266, 206, and a little more to the left, and I click. It was less than 200, and the program closed. That was exercise number 6. Exercise number 7 is output to the console if button left and right are pressed together. So what we have to do is, if left and right are pressed, it outputs to the console. So for that we need two variables, one for each button. Let's call them button left. We always set it false to start. And button right. Also to false. Now we will need two events for each button. One event is going to change the variable to true, so if it's pressed, and if the button has been released, it will set it to false again. Because if you don't have the release event, then once we click the button, it will always be true. But we can release the button, so we want to set it to false. Because we only want to output the console when both of the buttons are pressed. So I'm just going to copy the code for button R, paste it, change SDLK R to SDLK left, and both if statements, and change the variable we are changing from button R to button left, and do the same thing again, just changing everything for the right button. So. SDLK is now right, and the variable we are changing is button right. So we have now created four events, two events for each button, one sets the variable to true if it has been pressed, and if it has been released, it sets it to false. Now we have to write the logic. The logic is very simple, we just have to check if both buttons are pressed down. So if button left is equal to true, which means that it's pressed down, and button right is equal to true, so it's pressed down, then we output to the console. 
left and right are pressed together. And the new line. We also want to set bottom left to false and bottom right to false. So it doesn't output to the console the next frame. So if button left is pressed down and button right is pressed down, it will output to the console. So if you run this now, press the left button, right button, nothing happens. But if I hold on the left button, I press the right button, it outputs to the console. If I hold the down the right button and add the left button, it outputs to the console. So this works. And that's all the exercises. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you in lesson number three, when we're going to do rendering.